Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with another Minx Monday Q&A number 54. So let's get started with the very first question from Koibido Bu4. Uh, what do you think about Chanel counters in departments? In departments over charging. I called Chanel Corporation and the representative said unless it's a boutique, department stores have the right to increase prices. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah. She said if there is no boutique available to order online so I could get all the bells and whistles. I returned the hydrating lipstick because it was supposed to be $26. I was charged $58 and with tax it came out to $62. Have you had this experience? No, I have never, ever, ever heard of this. Uh, the fact that they have the right to increase prices, I, I don't, I, I, I am at a loss for words. I had no, no, I mean, I, I had no clue because usually when I, um, if I go to the Chanel counter to get a lipstick or any kind of makeup, it's usually, I mean, a hundred percent of the time it's the same price that I've seen online. Uh, but I literally, I had no clue. Wow. That just blows me away. I wonder, I wonder why <laughs> I'd really like to know why other than the fact that because it's in a department store, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like Louis Vuitton and Chanel when there are Neiman's or Saks or Bloomingdale's or anything like that. They're renting the space from the department store, but for the most part, they always say that they're still their own boutique. So if it's the same thing with counters. I wonder why that is, huh? I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research, but no, I had no, I had no idea. And oh my goodness, I can't believe that you were overcharged that much. Or I mean, it was that big of a difference. Wow. Uh, okay. Next question. Lorianne Tillman, if you could only keep one Chanel bag, which one would it be? Uh, if you could only pick one. Okay. So let's do the first question first. Um, if I could only pick one Chanel bag, honestly, this whole time, I always thought it was my jumbo. I love my jumbo, right? I don't use it as much as I think I should. Well, I part ways with it. Absolutely not. <laughs> I really have to start using it. Um, and I think it's a beautiful bag and I love it, but it has to be for me, my favorite bag that's, that's come to be number one in my Chanel collection it has probably got to be the I don't know. It's a toss up. Honestly, it's between two different bags. It's between my boy bag and my, uh, classic medium large with the silver hardware. I am obsessed with that medium large. I have used it so many times. Every time I, I, uh, switch out my bag, I immediately go for that one. And then I'm like, no, I want to rotate my bags. But honestly, if I could use it 24, seven, seven days a week and never rotate it out, I probably would. Cause I like it that much. I like the fact that, um, it's still, I, I could still carry quite a bit in there. So I could still carry all my essentials, but it is one of the most comfortable bags by far. My most comfortable Chanel bag has to be my boy bag, but the medium large is a very close second. It is just such a lightweight bag. It's so fun to use. And it's just, I am so carefree with it. I just don't even think twice about how I use it when I use it. It's just great. It's a wonderful bag. So I'd probably be between those, between those two. I couldn't decide. <laughs> Uh, okay. If you could only pick one favorite perfume, which one would it be and why? Um, it has been for the longest time, uh, Dulce & Gabbana number no. three, La Imperatrice. Uh, I love this perfume. I think I've bought it. I don't know. Maybe I thought it before it was, maybe I bought it like 10 times. Maybe it's been eight, nine. I have no idea, but I've bought this bottle so many times and not everywhere has it. So I'm so bummed out. Um, but this is a great, great fragrance. If I, I use it pretty much year round and I know you're supposed to use it in the, in the spring when it's really, cause it's a really light and airy scent, but I am obsessed I know I keep saying obsessed, but just the smell of it alone, it just brings back so many memories of when I've used this perfume and it's just a great, great perfume. Now there are, <laughs> there are a few close ones that I picked up. I think it was last month or the month before. Uh, and it's my Burberry love this scent. Oh my goodness. Incredible. So that's another favorite and the Chanel Allure, uh, as well. This one I love for nighttime. I just like the way that it just stays on and it, it just complements my, uh, my body chemistry, but always, always, always will be 
number three, La Imperatrice from Dolce & Gabbana. No, yeah, the little numbering system or whatever they had, not numbering system, lettering system, my goodness. Uh, okay, next question. Kimberly Wilson, I need your advice. Uh, I would like a bag that I carry on days when it's raining or the weather may be less favorable. I don't want to worry about water spots all the time as I try to take very good care of my things. Uh, I also need a bag that I can carry crossbody if needed. I think if, it, if I narrowed, I think I have narrowed, da narrowed it down to the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 bandolier and Demi Ben or the LV Retiro and Noir. However, I am open to suggestions and either LV or other brands. So between the two, honestly, I, I, I don't think you could go wrong with the Speedy B, uh, the Speedy 30 B. I think it's the ideal size for every day. The bandolier gives you that crossbody, and the fact that it's Demi Ben, you don't have to, you literally don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about rain, snow, what have you. So I think that is the best way to go. The Retiro, um, I, I like, I like that bag. It doesn't, I, I think it's very, I think it's very luxurious. Um, but I still think the Speedy B definitely takes, uh, takes the cake on that one. Uh, okay. Louis 1228. I do have a question for next week. If you could only have a one LV monogram bag, which one would you choose aside from the Neverfull or Speedy? Ah, cause you know, it would be one of those two. Uh, which one would I choose? Hmm. I'm looking at my bag. <laughs> I'm looking at my bags. I promise I'm not cross-eyed. Um, honestly, I think it would have to be the Pouchette Matisse and I would love to show it to you guys. I really would. However, it is at Louis Vuitton because it's being assessed for possible repair. I know. I know. I'm going to touch base about that a little bit for just a second. Okay. So the Pouchette Matisse is a fantastic bag. It's a great uh, cross body, just a, just a very versatile bag. And a lot of the times, um, some of the repairs that have to be done with it are the fact that when you open up the bag, the little, um, the flaps, I've, I've heard that people say that the canvas is starting to crack. Uh, however, mine didn't have that problem. Mine is the varnishing. And I don't know if you guys, for those of you that have been watching me for a while, I told you guys about the Josephine, the Josephine, my wallet had the same varnishing problems. And, uh, I remember when I got that done, the sales associate at Louis Vuitton, she said, oh, you still have time. You know, you bought it or it was a gift or I, I don't remember how I got it. Uh, but she said that you, she's like, you still have time so you can, um, you know, just repair it later on. I'm not like that. So the Pouchette Matisse I bought in April. So it's still fairly new. And the fact that the, that the varnishing is cracking, that really puts a damper. Um, I mean, it's a great bag. I don't want, I don't want it to continue to happen. Uh, and I don't know if it will. Uh, but the way that I see it is I fixed my Josephine with the varnishing. And ever since then I haven't had any problems. So maybe the same thing will happen with the Pouchette Matisse, but at the same time, the Josephine is $480 now and the Pouchette Matisse is 1650. So it's a, I mean, it's a pretty penny not to, not to worry about if it'll happen in the future. So uh, I took it to Louis Vuitton and the repair specialist wasn't there. So they're actually going to take a look at it and let, and get back to me, I think by either today or tomorrow, uh, to see if it needs to go out. And I'm just, I'm so bummed. I am so, so bummed because I really haven't had any problems. Uh, not too many problems with any of my items. Uh, lately I have had to take some things in, uh, like my Josephine's not because of the varnishing, but, uh, the little coin pouch. And I'll be able to talk about that when I get the products back uh, and I can do a full in-depth wear and tear on them. But I mean that that but I mean that sucks, right? <laughs> Cuz it's a fairly new bag and it's already starting to happen. And a lot of people out there said that this was going to happen and I didn't listen. I'm like, "You know what? I still think it's a great bag." And um now that's happening. Thankfully, it's not the canvas uh, the canvas cracking. And if they say, "Oh, you know, you still have time." No. I want to be able to nip it in the bud before it gets worse uh or before it starts to get to the canvas, you know? Uh, okay. Pink coffee. I was looking at the LV site. What do you think about the Gaia bag? It looks like the artsy and the delightful had a baby, but I don't know how practical it is. Uh, yes, I would have to agree with you. It looks, uh, it very much so looks like an artsy and a delightful. It's a little bit more structured and I forgot to, uh, write down the price on it, but 
I, I, I agree with you. I don't know how practical it'll be because at last time I looked at it online, I think it was, I think it was 18 inches in height. That is a big bag. And I think it might end up hitting on underneath the arm, kind of like the artsy. And I don't know if it'll start to, you know, get very soft over time. So I don't know. It doesn't seem very practical. It's, it's a pretty bag. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about the, the look of it. I just feel like it's a, it might be a little too busy, but, uh, as far as practicality goes, I agree. I don't, I don't think it would be, uh, okay. Poskill, Posse kill scent. I'm so sorry. I know I butchered that. Is there a bag that can be used unisex or be okay for a guy? Example, a speedy bag, the Odin and other, and other bags you think or know what bag can suit a guy. What that is from the women's bag line for Louis Vuitton. Thanks. Um, I honestly think pretty much all Louis Vuitton bags are unisex. I really don't think it, it matters. I've seen, um, I've seen some gentlemen wear what was it? A never full speedies. I just, it, I think they look great regardless. Uh, however, one of my favorites, even though I just talked about it, um, cause I'm so bummed out is the Pouchette Matisse. I saw that on two different gentlemen a few months ago. And I think, I just think it looks great. I prefer crossbody bags on, uh, on men and even the speedy B. I don't know. I think it just looks I think, I think it looks good. I mean, but however, you can rock whatever bag you like. But personally, I like the Pouchette Matisse and a uh, crossbody bag, like uh, maybe the Speedy B. I think those would look great. Uh, okay. M, M. Greer 02. I'm thinking, I'm trying to decide on my next bag, but I am so unsure. Looking at the Louis Vuitton Lumi, the Louis Vuitton Bastille, or the Chanel walk. Any suggestions? All my other LVs are canvas and I only have one Chanel SLG so far. Uh, okay. So you already have the SLG. So maybe you could try out, uh, the, the Chanel walk. I have talked about that. I have raved about that a million times. I think it is a, an, a, an incredible bag. Uh, and I know they technically call it a wallet because that's what it is, but we all pretty much use it as a clutch, uh, but it's just so great because you can go from day to night and without a problem. Uh, the Lumi, I have actually heard people say, or is it the best deal? The best deal might maybe gets a little bit heavier. And even though those two are on front, um, I have, you, you run the risk that not the risk, but the embossing on the on front won't be as prominent over time because it'll start to, uh, kind of smoothen out or smooth out. And then you have, uh, the same thing with the walk, depending upon how you care for it, the quilts might get a little bit flat, but between the two, if you wanted to add a little bit of variety to your collection, uh, and you don't have any other Chanel bags, I would go with the Chanel walk because like I said before, it's a great versatile piece. And, um, who knows, maybe you'll get addicted to Chanel and start getting Chanel. Uh, but out of the best still or the Lumi, I'd probably go for the Lumi for Luminaise. So yes, that's what I would do. Uh, okay. Melissa Bailey, do you own any LV shawls and what are your thoughts on them? Well, I do. I have one shawl and it is the black denim, uh, monogram shawl. I love this. Uh, I actually should do a review on it, especially as I'm, as where we are is where I am. <laughs> it's getting very, um, it's going to get cold hopefully sometime soon. Uh, but I think these are great. I think this is a great investment piece as well. Now, um, they do snag quite easily. And the reason why I'm so happy that I got the, uh, black denim, uh, or the fact that my hubby gave me this is because it really does hide snags a lot better than any other color. If you get a, um, if you get a, uh, one color, like a bold color, I think that I, I regardless, I think they're great. But as far as covering snags. And if you're going to pay this much amount of money, I personally don't want to see snags everywhere. So the fact that you have the denim collection, it really does hide them extremely well. I'm trying to find one so I could show you guys. Uh, I really should do a, a review on this, like I said, but I can't even find them <laughs> because it is, it's hard to tell where, where they are because of the, the color but I think they are wonderful. I really want to add another one to my collection or to, uh, yeah, to my Louis Vuitton collection. I just don't know which one to get. I wish they'd come out with a different, um, color denim. I don't know what though. I really like the shine shawls as well, but those seem a little 
a little bit more delicate. Uh, and I remember I had one and I had to return them because they had snags everywhere where I first got it. So I think they're great and great, great, uh, pieces for, uh, winter time or in the fall. Plus they, I mean, they're just, they are extremely warm. I mean, ridiculously warm. So <laughs> don't let them fool you because they're a little bit on the thinner side. They get extremely hot. Uh, okay. Kathy Detweiler. I want to purchase my first Chanel flap bag in caviar, but I'm worried about the quilts. I know that with lambskin, they will flatten over time. Do the caviar quilts get also get flat? Um, I, you know, I, I, I think I heard of one or two. I've heard that one or two times, but for the most part, no. Um, I heard it is easy to get dense with the lambskin quilts. Is that also the case with caviar? No. Uh, if so, is there anything that can be done to fix dense or deflated quilts with the caviar? Uh, no, not really, obviously, because it's leather. It'll just start to get very flat uh, over time. But the best thing that you can do is when you do get your caviar flap, make sure that you uh, set it or you sit it or wherever you're going to have it uh, in the upright position. Make sure it's out of its uh, out of the box so that the leather can breathe and leave it in the upright position. By doing that, the flat or the quilts on the bottom of the classic flaps are already flat. So then that will uh, ensure that nothing happens to the quilts on the very top of the bag. But for the most part, caviar is one of the best um, leathers in my opinion. It's so carefree. You don't have to think twice about it. So I think that is, excuse me, I think that is a great way to go. I don't know why I have so many problems with, when I'm talking on Minx Monday. Uh, okay, and then uh, Julie Sai had a similar question. She was wondering more so about the different types of Chanel leathers, such as caviar, calfskin, deerskin, and, and goatskin, and their durability. Um, like I said before, I honestly think that uh, caviar leather is the best best, most carefree leather there is for Chanel. And then uh, calfskin is actually the same thing as caviar, only it doesn't have the pebbles. It doesn't have that same finish. Um, and then when you get into deer skin and goat skin, they are very soft, supple leathers. However, as far as durability goes, they will get very... Um, they will get very soft and uh, the bag might start to sag. Uh, for example... Um, that's why a lot of people sometimes think twice about the surf tote because, uh, most of it, most of the, most of the, most of the surf totes are made in deer skin. So they get very, very soft, which is a good thing, but then they lose their structure. So you always want to stick if you, if structure and durability aren't really a question, uh, you can't go wrong with goat skin or deer skin, uh, because the leather is, I mean, oh my goodness, it is wonderful. But as far as making sure that your items last longer, you seriously cannot go wrong with caviar. Uh, even, um, yeah, caviar, caviar is just wonderful. And uh, obviously, like I said, calfskin is the same thing, just with a different finish. Uh, okay, Jet Black Husky Pack. That is an awesome name. <laughs> uh, I'm a nanny, college senior, and overall a young professional. I need a multi-purpose tote that's simple, functional, and luxurious. I love the idea of the Neverfull. However, I need more security to keep the 14th month old I nanny from getting into my things or from spilling the contents of my bag. I don't like the totally because I feel like it looks too much like a diaper bag. What tote would you recommend that has a zip top but is shaped like a Neverfull or the Celine Cabas tote? Right now, I'm alternating between a Fry Logan backpack and a $10 pleather tote from H&M, which I actually love a lot, but it's reminiscent of the Celine Cabas tote. I use, I'd use this bag more, but it doesn't have a zip top, so all my things are at risk of the baby. Help. Uh, okay, so... I think that there's three different ones that you can go for. So for luxurious... Something that's cross, I would recommend something that's cross body because that way you're hands free. You can make sure that you still look fabulous and you still, you know, have your hands available to be able to, uh, to care for the, for the baby. Uh, so as far as luxurious cross body bags, I think the Palas tote is a good alternative. Uh, you can always take off the cross body and just wear it as such, but um, it might lose its shape. So I don't know if that bothers you or not. Another one is the, the terrain. I, um, I think that is a very simple 
classic design. A lot of college students have actually started using that from, you know, blogs that I've read. Uh, it's just a simple design. It has a crossbody strap and you have a lot of uh, room in there that you could put all your items in there and a zip top. And the other one would have to be, is it the, is it the Sienna or is it the Kesa? I don't remember if it's the case or the Sienna tote that has the zipper on top, but it's the same thing, but it's Damia Ben. Uh, so I think it's a Sienna, but you can go that route. So I would recommend out of, you know, out of all the LV bags, I think those three would be uh, the best. Uh, and like I said, you can't go wrong with having a crossbody. So you, the, so that you're a little bit more, um, uh, you have a little bit more, more freedom with your hands and you can move around a little bit easier. So hopefully that helps. Uh, okay. And the last question is from Deborah Gagliato. Could you give, could you give, could you give some advice as how to think about building a collection like yours? I mean, which bags we should buy first and why for an LV and Chanel addict? Oh, uh, that's very nice. I, you know, I never thought that I never thought in a million years that my collection would be where it's at. Um, I'm, I'm very blessed that I've been able to get a lot of the items, um, that I have, you know, that I've wanted for so long, but I always say to stick to a wish list. If you sit down and you think about the bags or the items that you want the most, I would do a wish list because that really helps you, you know, kind of keep your eyes on the prize and not go here and not go there. Uh, another thing is it depends on price increases, to be honest. I, I really wish I would have gotten my Chanel Jumbo um, and even my boy bag way back when, when they first came out, had I known how wonderful and how comfortable the bags are. Um, I really wish I would have been able to have avoided a lot of uh, price increases, but you live and learn. So you you can always go for things that, if you know that you have something, for example, let's say you have a Speedy Bandolier, uh, and that's on your on the top of your wish list, and then you have a Josephine, or you have an Emily wallet, or a Sarah wallet that you really, really like as a close second, I would go for the bag first, because the bag will increase more, especially if it's a popular bag. With Louis Vuitton, the popular bags always increase a little bit more, uh, versus SLGs, those things go up maybe, I think, five it goes anywhere from five to twenty dollar uh twenty dollar difference when they increase so that one you can always get later on uh or if you have your eyes on a limited edition piece i would always say go for those because then they're going to be that much harder to find in the future uh, but uh yeah it's just you know follow your heart make sure you get a wish list that is the number one rule i think when it comes to any collection uh because otherwise I'm, I'm sure i would have gone crazy buying everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so hopefully that helps you out as well, but that does you guys, I think, oh, actually I did have one more question. I don't remember, uh, the person that asked me, so I apologize, but they had asked me if I was going to buy the Christian Louboutin, uh, lipsticks that were launched last week or the previous week, because I do have their nail polishes. Uh, I, I think so. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're crazy expensive. They're $90 for a lipstick, but the way that I see it is I have their nail polishes, right? Their nail polish were, their nail polishes were $50 a piece. That to me is insane. However, they, on me anyways, they last the longest and I think they have some of the best, uh, colors out there. They're just, I don't know. I, I love their nail polishes. So I'm wondering if the nail polishes are that fantastic is a lipstick like that as well. But the only difference is the nail polishes last anywhere from 10 to 14 days on my nails, right? If I use the lipstick, I highly doubt they'll last 10 to 14 days. So therefore I'll be using more of it. And I am on the fence. I mean, it's a lot of money for something that comes off when you eat. There's no possible way that the lipstick is going to last any more than 12 hours. I, I, I highly doubt that. So, um, that kind of worries me because obviously you're, you're, I mean, it's, that's a lot of money, right? It's a lot of money, 90 bucks, $90 for a lipstick. Did you guys have any of you guys bought it? Do you guys love it? Um, I'm hoping that the, that, I don't know, maybe the, some people have said that they, it feels extremely luxurious, that they have beautiful colors, but, um, I'm very, very curious. So I don't know. <laughs> I say yes, but you never know. 
<laughs> but anyways, that does it, you guys, for another Minx Monday q and I did have to answer some questions online, and uh, some of you guys have asked me where do you ask the questions for Minx Monday. Uh, if you can put it on the most recent Minx Monday, it would make it a lot easier for me to be able to access the questions, and then we can go from there. But that does it, you guys, and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.